Um, well, I, <clears throat> I, in fact, I was a bit ignorant of of uh, uh, my own national cinema, Portuguese, and I was not. Uh, what do you say, a cinephile. I, I was a cinephile, but for a very short period, uh, almost in my 20s, around that time. So what I saw before was uh, I went to the movies a lot, but I was not choosing that much. I saw what was in s normal cinemas. I was much more into um, poetry, written poetry, and music, especially music at that time, than cinema. Then slowly and a little bit by chance too, I s thought that some films were started appealing to me, and, uh, and there was this... Uh, mm, Mm. It was very close to a lot of music that I was hearing in some films, uh, and I slowly began began to be attracted, and and I, I I just spent a few months, not even a year, in film school, and that's where I saw, I think, for the first time, mm, carefully, some of the Portuguese films, classic, Oliveira, and, and especially because I had a teacher in that school who was a filmmaker called Antonio Reis. Antonio Reis? Yeah. yeah. Um, he, not only he was the reason that I stayed in that school f a bit more, if he wasn't there, I don't know, I would have gone away. Um, and most of all because I saw uh, one of his films and then I saw all of them and um, his first feature film called Traz os Montes um, really um, unblocked certain things uh, because I think it happens the same to everybody. Uh, national cinema, your national cinema is something you you have problems with. And I think it must be the same f probably for you. It's you are a bit more critic, you are a bit more... Um, you tend to refuse. And that's what happened to me. I didn't... I, had, I was not attracted. And then slowly I began to see uh, Manuel Oliveira's films, Paulo Roche, etc., and uh, especially Oliveira, because I, I I grew fond of those films and I really saw them uh, a bit late, but I but I saw them really. Yeah, but that mm, cinema is... Mm, um, you don't have to do films to to feel it. I mean, it's just a few. Maybe it's a bit uh, not done today or forgotten, but um, it used to be like that. And it's sometimes it's as important things you don't see that you do see. Uh, I would even say that cinema is, of course, it's a visual art, but maybe not. It's, you have to work and imagine a lot. A lot of the film, a lot of the film is done between the images, between the shots. It's uh, what happens when two shots are together. And that's, you do that. Uh, of course, the filmmaker helps you joining the shots and constructing the film, but 
you have also to to work a little bit. Um, it's also a matter of shadows and mysteries and silences. Um, so, of course, all of that attracts me. It's a big part of the classical film that formed me. It's still the still the f cinema that I go back to. Also feel it's a bit missing today, but I'm not nostalgic. I try to and I try to work it a little bit on my films going into a s into into the rooms <laughs> inside the rooms and it it was a bit unconscious i think and then now it's i know i think i know why certain things why i do certain things why i prefer certain things why i think i'm better suited to do certain things or than others i prefer to be inside than outside in film uh, i like to work for long periods of time films are made in three four five weeks i prefer to do it in years one year two years mm, because i'm not satisfied or i'm not uh, i don't go far enough in the work, so I had to rearrange all my uh, the, the, the production side of it. Uh, less people, less equipment, more time. To so the budgets I have are to pay people, not locations or machines or hotels. Or and of course that brings me to a certain side of uh, things that are more intimate, more mm, yeah, intimacy. Um, more private. What attracted me to the to this community you were referring to, to this to, to the people and uh, was not an idea of um, uh, of um, denunciation or protest or th the first feelings were They all felt very secret, very mysterious. I didn't know what attracted me to them, and uh, slowly, step by step, I found things. I like in life, you you know the person, and then you know two, and you know three, and then. And I th really thought that cinema films should be done like that, knowing. Mm, try to understand and know what you're doing, what you're filming. So I had to break with a certain uh, form of doing films and I approached this community and I, I, I was there, I was there not only for films, I was there I, because I, I wanted to understand and I saw a lot of a lot of feelings that I recognized as my own also. So, <coughs> of course, we always say everything is political, so it was also a political choice, of course, to be on this side and not on that side. But you had to do the films accordingly. So I knew I couldn't bring the, how do you say, brutality of cinema because there's that too cinema is is very violent when it's done like most films are done uh, with this urgency with this pressure with this inflation with this noise and you know uh, so i decided to go the other way
when I felt I had to shift to change things, um, it, it's this moment when I was thinking how and what should I do that could be more more according to my idea of film of filmmaking and a life of filmmaking and it was not re really for me it was not writing scripts doing castings shooting seven weeks or and then promoting and then doing another one it was not that it, it resembled more for me a kind of permanent state of it involves shooting, thinking, preparing every day, like any other job. I mean, uh, it's more a continuum. So I was thinking how to do it. I met this community, this place too, a neighborhood, and I was there every day. I tried to imagine and and a certain discipline, a certain schedule for myself, because I was alone. More in like a painter or, or a student of history or, that, or archaeology that has to go to there to study and observe and take notes. So that's what I did before starting a new project that was called In Vanda's Room. In that film I used a very small camera that I bought, uh, not even digital, it was video cassettes. It was one of the first camcorders. Really the first ones that I bought in a supermarket, not in a supermarket, in a small shop. And um, <coughs> when I began doing this film I had a lot of doubts because I used to big machines and 35 millimeter and certain image and richness and etc. And this camera was compared, was very poor. Uh, I mean, so I had a lot of doubts. Um, not about the project, that seemed interesting. Could not Maybe it was not a film, it was just a sociological work or, you know, or something just for me. But uh, that I was interested in. But the visual side of it was, um, I mean, I had some doubts, fears, I was afraid. And slowly I... Um, you talk about style, it was not a style, it, it was, it came from the necessity and the reality of the spaces, especially. Because that place I shot, and in s mostly inside, the rooms, the, the houses, even the, the small alleys, the architecture and the way it's built, uh, it's very turned into the inside, very protected from the outside, like a lot of uh, Arab, African villages, cities, I mean, a lot of secret spaces, secret for the foreigner, for the outside, but because the people inside uh, understand it quite well. So the light also gets in in a different way. It, it's more broken, it's more fragmented, it's more secret, it's, it gets uh, it's a bit darker. Or it's not darker, it's, it, there's more contrast. I mean, it's, it's more harsh, it's more violent. So that's, that was my reality when I was shooting this film. That reality, that that light and shadow reality with the fragility of this camera, this video camera, I understood that I, I had to, as you said, focus or center 
almost every shot and almost every shot have has since then somebody it's not about objects or landscapes it's normally people close-ups or it's about human beings I had to center on the human being and uh, what's around them even if I tend to like to see the person in their own their own spaces uh, their rooms their favorite I mean where they live I had to make some choices so if you watch carefully my films at least um, either they are very close to a window or they go to the window or uh, we find ways that they are they have a little bit of reflected light from normally a, a hole a window a, a ray of light or something that was the reality uh, the windows are very small and uh <coughs> So, um, yeah, there's a connection there to, to the painting you, you refer to. I mean, and that the Dutch Flemish paint paintings um, of the 17th century, that's when they became... Um, it, it was a big shift in painting too, it became... But not, it's not only the light, because people always talk about the, the let's say, aesthetical side. I mean, the chiaroscuro, the painterly side of things. But what happened with the um, Dutch painting was something for me also very important, or really. And that's, that's why I, it's my preferred painting. It's it's the, let's say, the documentary side of painting. They started painting people working, uh, studying, knitting, uh, cooking, uh, peasants, parties, uh, markets, all that you see in those, all the, um, you tend to see the Rembrandt portrait or the light, but you forget all the others or Vermeer, and Vermeer you see a lot of people working and uh, there's the reality side of things, it's, it's the first documentary p paintings I think, it's, it's like in film and that appealed to me, I, I always liked in discovering little things, you know, a guy with a, the shepherd with the, with the sheep and a guy playing the flute and there's a lot of things it's, uh, not only did the, um, not only the light. There's uh, there's two things. And also, I was thinking about uh, that light. Uh, uh, on that people's life, they are marginalized and they they have not uh, they have not, they have not much more light in their life. Yeah. yeah. Uh, their reality is more uh, on shadow mm. side. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I agree with you, but it's uh, it's, no, uh, it's, it's it's an interpretation. I, I, I know that uh, you have no, because that quickly could go to the dark side, and you know, yeah. uh, people on the dark side, and uh, it has some truth. The lack, the absence, from that side, I I, I agree with you, but we can over do it and, s and say that these people are on the, the dark side of life or etc and that uh, doesn't appeal to me that much but it's just that I was there I'm still a little bit there and um, and I've actually done I've, I did a film where that confronts or shows these two sides because a film called Colossal Youth that I did it shows you the new neighborhood, the new rooms, and these rooms are white, uh, are social housing, and they have a very different, uh, it's a different um, uh, setting, condition for them, uh, and uh, 
it's 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 a bit tragic in fact because sometimes they say that uh, they prefer this a certain the other way of being together because these white rooms also mean separation and locks, keys and the old neighborhood was much more open because uh, the doors were open, the windows were used to, you know, bring hands together the alleys were like this and you could pass rice or money or things now they're all separated in boxes like we all are and there is a certain light that um, that is a bit blinding to them uh, it is a bit violent this yeah but this is it's difficult because what you're saying in, uh, in fact it's much more frightening and scary. Um, probably you are feeling already this mm -hmm. fear, which is good to have, because there is no method. There is no... That's what I would say. It's not an advice, it's just what's there. It's that with someone that mm, doesn't know, that has no technique, or sometimes they... Mm, like I'm working with a lot of people that have no relation with any form of art. I mean, they, they've never seen theater play or, uh, you know, they, or even film. I mean, they used to te television, but... So everything, this, this work is, is, is new in a way for them. And in a certain way, it has to be new t to you, too. Uh, if you impose or if you come with a lot of, you know, I'm from cinema, I come from some place a bit superior or something. I don't know, maybe it will work, but what I'm s saying is that you will have to work it your own way, and your own way will involve this person. That's, I think, the, the... And what are your, your way of working? It's time, it's giving, you know, it's, it's, it's not a, it's not a, it's not even an idea, it's just that I felt when I was doing this first film, I felt time in another way, because I had done films. What happened to me was, I was fortunate to have done three films in a very conventional way, big crews, etc., budgets, etc. You have to stick to a schedule and a plan. And I didn't like it. I didn't like the, what I told you. I, d I had no time to... It was... Uh, in fact, we were always working in a certain urgency. Sometimes it's, you need it, but not like this, not all the time. Uh, it, it's, it's not a good... Uh, mm. Urgency doesn't... It kills a lot of things that... Uh, cinema has become a little bit an enemy of time. You know, it's, it's amazing that still filmmakers can do what they do sometimes, because it's... A, they rush so much, they run so much that... So what I felt is a new... that I was liberated from this, um, these shooting schedules and day-by-day day rush. And I could, I could uh, search, I could look for, I could understand more, or not understand, and be confused, because that also can be a part of your film. Not to know, to be confused, to not understand something, it's... Okay. Silence can be a part of the film too. If, if they, you think they will say something, I th 
they, meaning the other side of your camera, maybe they don't know how to say it, or they don't want to say it, and I don't think you have to force it with writing your their dialogue. So that part, I worked a lot, and um, it's not a method, it's just time. I, I gave time to people who usually don't have that time, you know. They, the, the first thing they, they are refused is uh, some dignity in this society. They are exploited, of course, capitalistically exploited. A part of this is not having time. They work too much, they are too alienated, they are too exploited, they get home and the men get drunk and fall on the bed and the women watch TV. So they never had time to think, to no, I'm not even saying write a poem <laughs> or sing or, you know. Uh, but that's important, the, the, the doing this work. I think you have to give them this possibility of time, expressing themselves and not putting you, you, you over that. Your job is to do the film. And the film is already a lot, you know, the craft, the, the shots, the, the light, the sound, the that's already a big part and the first thing you have to do. Then you have to search for um, what they used to call the content. Mm -hmm. I don't know if we're recreating reality. I really, it's difficult because, you know, I'm not analyzing. It's much more the critics or the viewers. Uh, <sighs> mm, I'm. I I like very much. Um, a saying of, uh, there was a, a French filmmaker called Jacques Rivette, who also wrote a lot, one of the Nouvelle Vague filmmakers, uh, that used to say, um, when you're shooting a film, it's not an intellectual work, it's a very practical, physical, work, you have to, you know, it's very manual too, it's very, you know, if you have done this, it's, you, you know, you're, you're looking for very, uh, <coughs> solutions for th problems that are not very theoretical or intellectual or philosophical. You abandon that, it's, you put aside those things and you do the film. You do it shot by shot. Uh, so, uh, <coughs> and you have to rely a little bit on your intuition, <coughs> and your feelings. And for me, a big part of it is the relation you establish with the, the people that are in front of the camera. Because behind, you are alone, or you are three friends, or ten. And more than 10, I think that <laughs> it's beginning <coughs> to be a bit too much. But you have to, you know, you, you're a part of a team that in principle you, you're there for one thing, even if it's very mysterious and nobody knows exactly what it is. You're a team, you go together and you solve problems, a lamp, uh, a nail, um, you know, it's... The important thing is that the other side of the camera be in touch with that, be not there to be paid a salary to say things or to act things, but to be. And, and to be in front of a camera, it's very difficult. It's, it's very, very difficult. And if you go even a bit more far away and you, you even ask without asking, but for the person to be 
himself or herself completely, almost naked with all their most deep feelings and uh, to expose uh, completely, that's a very serious work, you know. It involves a lot of even morals, ethics, things. Should I show this? Should I go there? Should I... So a lot of things happen there. Uh, a lot of unknown. It's unknown. It can be very silent, like you say. Mm. But that that's what I say. It, it has a place in the film. You just have to feel it and work it. This silence, the why isn't he hiding or not going there or or the opposite. So it's it's a day by day uh, thing between human beings almost. It's not it doesn't have to do with art. It's just a normal normal. It's what we do together in society, the way we proceed, the way we I chose to go it's a bit pretentious to say this, but in, in to go deep, profoundly into things. Because I think the deeper you go inside someone or in his, even in his irreal irrationality, in his silences, the more, um, the more it tells about uh, this community, for instance. I did, the films I did have maybe a hero or a protagonist, and, but slowly it connects to a whole community, what this man is saying, what it's it's a part of the the life of the community and it's just speaking for 10 a hundred ten thousand I think this this is too dangerous not dangerous it's, it's really I don't think you should think about that I think you should put it aside this idea of documentary and fiction is totally useless if you're making a film, then f f analyzing films, critics, etc. Okay, if you if you need, if you want to think like that, yeah. If you're making a film, uh, of course you are in reality. You're not even if you are in a studio with everything painted and completely fake and fantasy. You are in a studio with real people, or if not. You have to be in a very, very, very... I don't... It doesn't exist, uh, the condition where you are not in reality with your camera. Mm. There's always you. <laughs> because the camera is completely cold and it's a machine. Uh, now it's a computer, but but there's you. So even even if there's nothing else, there's you. So you have to consider that you are making the film, so what comes out, it's your um, hands and your mind and your heart. And so, I never thought about that. These kind of thoughts disappear, they are not there when you're with your camera and you have someone in front or something. You don't think about documentary or fiction. Or I think no no one ever thought about that, I think. So, that, um, there's so many problems, like Jacques Rivet says, so many. I mean, real problems, you know. This doesn't work because the camera is not on the right position. We have to move it higher or lower or back or side or etc. And then that object doesn't mm, look it doesn't. It's not a part of your of your frame. I don't know. It's a lot of things you have to intervene and change. And some say manipulate. There's a lot of manipulation. Of course there is. But uh, it's 
we don't need to be uh, confused or shocked because it is, of course. It's so you have to be what I'm. What I. What I would say is that it's not documentary or fiction. It's you have to be. It's not a nice. It's, it's a difficult word, but serious. You know, serious in the sense it's a serious matter. If you have, uh, I don't know, an old lady or a very young lady in front of your camera, or a boy or a, an old man, it's a serious thing, you know. If you consider him more than just an actor that is going to say some lines that you invented one day, uh, you just thought you're a big, big writer and <laughs> you thought this is. I want this to be said by someone. I mean, if you are in another kind of attitude, it's a very serious matter, and and that brings you to yeah, to, to be more uh, uh, something that comes immediately. I think it's you. You have to be decent. You know, you have to be decent. You, there's a sort of justice, equality, behind and in front of your camera. So, you know, uh, that can be controlled. The power issue, because if you have a camera, you're in power. You're the chef, you're the master, you're the... So, try to balance this balance. It's very important, I think, because it will show in the film, it will be there. Like the money, if you have too much money, it's there. Or if you waste too much money. On this room, I did it with my pocket money. I didn't have, I bought the camera, I bought a tripod, I tried to buy a and that's all. And then I did it alone. I did some mistakes because, but, uh, but, in fact, they were not mistakes because I didn't have anyone for the sound, so I, I forgot a little bit the sound. And it's stupid because it's a big, big part. It's it's fifty percent of your film, at yeah. least, if yeah. not more. And I didn't have a, a friend or a companion to do the sound, so I did everything. So I had a lot of problems in post production because things that were magnificent and very good and were lost or then or we had spent hours in uh, mixing and post production to you know you know to bring a voice etc but i did it alone and it's i always say i cannot do it again i think because it it's an energy that maybe i don't have anymore but it's it's those kind of things that you do <laughs> once in your life, it takes a lot of you. But things I learned in that film, I now, I now use it. I, I, I think I, it's it's good because it you, you learn things when you're doing a film. I don't think you learn that much when you're doing it the conventional way. So I, what I'm saying to everybody is. Please try to change a little bit in the production, you know, because then the, what you want to say and the artistic problems, you'll find out, you'll, you'll solve that. But the production, I think that's the basis for a, a decent way of working, you know. You, you'll be happier, I think. Yeah. Or no, I'm not saying happy because we're never happy either. It's very, mm, we always think of, and the film is never there, and <laughs> but that's life. But at least you will feel, yeah, this is made in a, it's, it's human. It's, it's, I was not eaten alive by the money and the agent and the this and that, and a lot of films in this festival are, of course. And more and more in the, Auteur, this art films, because uh, it has become also a small industry. The um, 
Well, I'm on the side of, oh yeah, I'm, I can say the things I, I don't want to say, <laughs> because I am in a different position now, and, and things um, evolved a lot since I, I made my first film. I don't know, since the 60s, there was a lot of changes. And then when I made my first and I um, now retrospectively I feel not only the change but I feel the, um, I don't even say the loss or the l that we've been losing a lot of things. We have been losing a lot of things but it's it's almost another world. Um, it's a bit what you say the, the the space you have to do your film and to think your film. If you're already in on this side of things, it's it's. Uh, I think you're less yourself, yes. You're, um, you have less chances to, to be yourself today. If you succeed with your first film, that's what I feel or sense. If your first film has a small echo in a festival or two or three, you will be immediately grabbed by some force in my time, I, there were producers, I mean, and f uncle. yeah, and others, and uh, you had fundings, you, 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 you applied for funding, like today, and you got this or not, and then you... But producers saw uh, in early times the cinema as an art way, not uh, only in but today they say it's an art way too. Huh? It's uh, it's even more art today than it was. Uh, you might not consider that valid, or that's I'm I'm with you there. But what for me happened, and it's a lot. It has a name. What changed for me? Uh, you you can give it a name. It's uh, it's called sales agent. There's a figure, which it's not a producer, it's not a distributor, it's not a, a financer. It's something that began um, when I had my first film, it was beginning. And then it evolved, and today it's, a, it's the biggest force. It's still a bit subterranean in... But the, the sales agents are the agents, are people, not only contact you if you have this small echo, you know, if, oh, this guy is interesting, or this girl, this, this film, and they contact you not only to buy your film and sell it around the world and put it in a hundred festivals, they will propose you that, but they will propose already your next film. In a subtle way, they will say, ah, what you did here, maybe you can do in your second with this actor. Or, what are you thinking about? Ah, I'm thinking about, oh, good. That's already a form of pitching. And I think it's a bit, uh, not a bit, it's, I think it's, it's a loss, you lose a lot. Uh, you lose a part, going back to this interview, you lose a lot of mystery and secrecy that you need. You need it for your film. I'm completely against pitching and, I mean, in totally against these new ways of producing or financing. I think we are in a stage of, um, how do you say, most of the sales agents and producers today are completely uh, junkies of financing. Even if the film, I mean, 
This film is has a one million dollar budget. They will go for five. You need one. Yeah. That's what it costs. You, you've made your thing. They will tell you no. It's ten or five. I assure you. I I promise you. This is the truth today. And you think, but why is that? I I mean, no. It's I. I made it in my mind. I did some. It costs five hundred thousand euros or one hundred thousand euros to go back to our reality, and they will say no, 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 no. Yeah. You know, because this is part of a inflation process that is not only in cinema. It's it's our life, uh, a waste and uh, and. Um, Corruption, in the sense, the etymology of the word corruption, you know, the rotting organism. Um, so all of this, the money side of it, the, the it's not even the money. It's now they don't call it money anymore <laughs> in the film. They call it financing, uh, co-production. I don't know the order. That's the question they ask you. What's your plan of financing or something? You know this works and this. I'm I'm terrified of that. I'm not terrified. I'm against it. I try to fight it and because a film costs something, and that's it. It's not ten times more. And um, and if you don't want an actor, you should not. You should do it with the first guy you see in the street. That's your. You see someone and you say it's him. It's not the actor. So go for that. I mean, it's a risk you have to take. But cinema without a certain kind of risk and it's nothing. So. Is there left uh, the producers like uh, you, first producer, uh, who? I don't know. <laughs> no thing is. This this um, new class of producers and distributors and the sales agents, they are all very young. Huh? They are they are the age normally the, the age of the filmmakers. You know, uh, they are young uh, because most of peop most of these people come from film schools or universities, film studies. You know. And it's, uh, you know, a, a, a film producer today, and I'm not saying the film producers then were stupid or just guys with cigars and money. No, they were very intelligent people and very sensitive, and some of them at least. Um, but uh, today I have the feeling that the producer now can can do a paper, an abstract, a uh, dissertation on Ozu or uh, Parajanov, as well as you. I mean, you know, it's film studies started, I don't know, 20 years ago or something. It changed a lot of a lot of this. Mm, cinema has become educated in the sense, in the university sense, a lot. Um, in this festival, I mean, everybody, everybody, or a lot, come from film studies, universities, film schools that are more, uh, you know, and this class of sales agents, and uh, I don't know. It's the um, I don't know what's the the improvement or the gain. I always, but that's my <laughs> my. Personality. I always see the the loss, what people lose. As I'm also used to that of seeing that people lose things, and and we're losing a little bit of reality in films. Or it's a lot of films that look the same. I mean, everybody feels the same. I mean, it's, this looks this. There's a certain setting and. Uh, and my idea, which is maybe crazy, it, that it comes from production. It doesn't come from the art of the talent of the person, you know. I even think that sometimes 
a film is destroyed because of the production. The guy is, he has something, he has an idea. And then, I don't know, French television or uh, this uh, distributor or that uh, compacted it, formatted the film in such a way that it, it lost its, its, its personality. Yeah, yeah. This is the future of cinema, because... Yeah, but we now, I think, I mean, we can do more or less not what we want, but we found a way, they gave us a certain, well, here, I can come here in, I'm not a young filmmaker, I've done some things, so... But for a young guy doing a short or a first feature, it's, it's a difficult position. I know no, it's much more difficult because the forces are, are more visible. Uh, when I had my first film, I, had, I was alone and I had a film and they saw it and the critics said yes, no. And I, then I did a second and, you know, now you're, you're waiting for other kinds of echoes, you know. Uh, that's my feeling. So I would go for uh, concentrating on the production side, really thinking about how much do we need, how are we going to pay these people, should we go for the luxury of certain expensive things, actors, etc. I have certain principles until now, maybe I'll change, I don't know, but I will not pay for locations. If, if a hospital or an airport, it happened to me, ask me for 3,000 euros a day or something, I will try to do an airport in my room. <laughs> and it will be better, that's the thing. It will be, you'll do a very simple st stylization, you know. And then the actors, I don't know, that's what I'm most sensible, I, I think you can, it's so great to see a non-actor working, it's, it's really, it moves you, because the, the friendship, the relation, because there's always a friendship that you establish, it's never the same as an actor. You can, you know, the actor is nothing against actors, but Something I missed, you, t you talked about Glauber Roche or, you know, Jean Rouche. That work with non-actors is over, I don't see it anymore. I see it in documentary television, you know, interviews and things. But the profound, you know, work with someone, like people used to do before, um, it's, it's not done. And I, I miss that, I miss I miss unknown faces, you know, and unknown feelings. And you saw that, you saw that Pasolini and you know, who is this person? Uh, and, uh, and then immediately, yes, it's like me. Because now the actors, I mean, <sighs> well, 